If I were to ask you what is most responsible for our weather, the correct answer would be the sun. The sun heats up the earth, and how that heat is moved around the earth is what gives us our weather. So let's define what heat is since it's so important. Heat is the energy that flows from an object with a high temperature to an object with low temperature. And temperature, if we were to define that, is simply how fast the particles are vibrating. Right? They're all particles are moving around. We think about that. Air particles are always bouncing around. The more they move, the higher the temperature. The less they move, the lower the temperature. So the energy that flows from an object with high temperature, the particles moving around a lot, to an object with low temperature, particles not moving around as much. There are two ways that these, uh, this heat can be transferred around. Right. One way is conduction. The other we've already talked about a little, which is convection. So let's talk about conduction first. All right. You've seen this uh, toy before. Sometimes people leave it on their desks. Um, it's called a Newton's Cradle. And we're going to take this metal marble, and we're going to swing it, and it's going to bang into this marble, which is going to hit this marble, which is going to hit this marble, it's going to hit this marble all the way down. Now this marble is eventually going to move this way, even though it never contacted this marble over here. All right? What happened is when this marble hit this one, it transferred its energy. So we said before that the particle is moving around a lot with high temperature. If this particle had high temperature, it moved this one, which was not moving, so it had low temperature. But now it transferred that. It moved, so it has higher temperature. This is what conduction is. Now, if we think about it, solids are packed very tight together. So if I were to bang into, say, this particle right here, you could see how very easily these particles could all start banging into one another. And particles that are really close like that would become good conductors of heat because they're all so close together. But particles that are not so close together, right? let's look at this liquid. If I were to bang into this particle right here, it might move to right there, but it may not hit anything else. So liquids... They don't work so well with conduction. Solids, they work great with conduction. Heat transfers through solids with conduction. Not so much with liquids. If I were to look at this frying pan, this frying pan is heating this egg. It's cooking this egg. This egg is heating up through conduction. Now let's think about how that works. There's a fire or a burner of some sort, which is making the particles in the frying pan move around. And these particles in the frying pan are banging into the particles on the egg. And they're causing those particles to move, right? which is increasing the temperature of the egg, which in this case is causing a chemical reaction. It's causing this egg to cook. Convection, we've already talked about that. This is all about density. right? In convection, the air rises, or the gas rises, or the liquid rises. Convection works more with liquids and gases. So with a conduction, it's mainly solids. Convections, it's liquids and gases. So these liquids and gases, the air or the uh, liquid or gas gets heated up. It becomes less dense. It rises or floats. It cools and then begins to sink as it is more dense.